Hey there, fellow designers. Welcome back to my channel, where we explore the world of CAD and help you become a design pro. In today's tutorial, we'll be learning how to model a wooden drawer using Onshape. So grab your mouse and let's get started. First, let's have a look at the parts. We got a front panel or a front cover, a front panel, side panels, back panel, bottom panel, and the knob, and there's a screw here. I'll activate the exploded view so you have a better look at that. Here, there's the screw. We will insert that um, in the assembly from the standard parts. We'll design that knob. We'll apply some joinery techniques like the finger joint here between the back panel and the side panel and the dovetail joint between the front panel and the side panel. All right, so let me close that. Take that over here. So I got this empty part studio. I'll be working in millimeters for this exercise. And let's start with a sketch on the top plane. I press N for a normal view, P to hide those planes, S to get my center point rectangle. Connect that to the origin and give that an overall dimension of 296. And 258. So that is um, where our... Um, body, side panels, back panel, front panel will be limited by those dimensions. So with O, I go into the offset, take that line, turn that around, and give that a 12 millimeter thickness. So that is the thickness of the back panel. I do that once more with um, the, that side panel, go over here, accept that, give that 12, all right. Do that once more for that um, front part here. And that one will make it a little thicker, 16 millimeters. All right. So um, for that front cover, I'll just use that center point rectangle again. Pull that out like that. With V, make a vertical constraint here. With I, connect those two. With D, dimension the thickness of the panel with eight millimeters. And, um, that overlap will be eight. All right, so the way a draw is, it's a symmetrical body. So we will just start by um, drawing half of that. So I take the L command, go up here, connect that, that's it. We'll work on the right hand side of things. That's it for the sketch. I go into an isometric view and make that first extrude, which is the, the front cover. So I take the extrude, take that region, go up here in one direction, 133. 
make a second end position going down seven millimeters. Accept that. Call that right away. Front cover and give that some wooden type of color, maybe this here. All right, then let's make a sweep of a profile. I'll turn that around, go into sketch, take that plane, make a circle, connect that to that edge, dimension that with uh, eight millimeters. And the great thing about on shape is, I want to make a sweep like what you would route um, that path here with with a router. So um, I can take that sweep path right from our three D geometry. So I go into sweep, take that profile. I, I can just take that quarter circle, go into the sweep path window here. And just pick here, pick there, over here, removing, accepting, and there it is. Great. So let's make that sketch visible again. Turn that around, looking from the back. And extrude once more. And that'll be the side, so I extrude. Take that one, that one, that one, a new body, and the height will be 125. Accept that, call that um, side, and again, give that some color here, some different shade of yellow, orange. All right, so we get the side. Now we will need one sketch on which we can place on this face. I take that, press N to, again, normal view of that. And here, we will um, define the joinery details and that bottom panel channel. Let's start with that. I press S, take that two point rectangle, place that something like that. Go in here, press D. Distance will be 12. Thickness of the panel will be 5. And then let's go into isometric view to understand this. So this is our front panel. So um, the, the bottom panel needs to be Um, slid in that front panel so we'll give it a dimension from this vertex to here vertical give that four millimeters all right we get that now for the finger joint um, joinery We'll need just one rectangle here. Sure, that will be constrained by the thickness of the back panel, therefore vertical constraint, and a height of 10 millimeters. That's it for that. All right, and now we go into that um, dovetail joint um, business. And there are plenty of ways how to 
to find dovetails. I'll show you my technique. I'll start again by a um, two-point rectangle. Go from here, over there. This is a particular type of dovetail, um, which um, can be called a, a covered dovetail, a half-covered dovetail, because there it will be this um, distance from the font, front, four millimeters. This again will be vertically constrained here. Then we need one line, a construction line, from that midpoint going down here. Then we need two points, one here, one there. Give those points a distance, a vertical distance of eight millimeters, and again, eight millimeters. Now, go into the line command, place a line here at an ob oblique angle, make that coincident, give that an angle of 82 degrees, make some construction line here horizontally, Go into the mirror of uh, other way around. Go into the mirror. That's our mirror line. That is what we want to mirror. And that's it. Accept that. That's it for our sketch number three. Um, let's make that first cutout. That region, remove, define that by next, accept that, go into the linear pattern command of a feature pattern, um, make a click here to select our cutout, take that edge for the direction, turn that around, Give that a distance of 20 and an instance count of 5. Accept that. All right, so we got that side of um, um, defined. Now let's model that um, back panel. I'll go into the extrude. Take that region and that one, new, from um, starting offset, from entity, take that face and then that'll be to face to that face here. Accept it the way. There's some Z fighting of faces. We'll fix that in the next step. With the Boolean operation, subtract, keep tools. That is our tool. That is our target. There it is. Call that part back panel. And again, give it some wooden color here. Great. That's it for that part. Now let's work on the um, front panel. But first we'll just um, make that a little nicer here with a chamfer. First chamfer here at the top, eight millimeters. One more at the bottom, six millimeters. 
There it is. Now we need to have the sketch visible. First, let's extrude that front panel. For that, we need that bottom region, that one. New. Up to face. Take that face. Yeah. Rename that front panel and just get some more color on there, on that one. Okay. And now let's hide our side for a moment. Go into the extrude. Take our dovetail, removing. We can pick a vertex for the depth of that. And how deep is that going to be? Well, the thickness or to that sketch point. Accept that. Next time, next thing is a linear pattern. Again, Feature, click in there, pick the direction, turn that around, give that a distance of 30 millimeters, and four instances. There it is. And let's do that Boolean thing one more time. So I go into Boolean, go into Subtract, take that front panel as a tool, keep the tool, take our side panel as the target, accept that, hide that sketch number three, and there we have those two joinery techniques applied to our design. Now let's get that bottom panel in there. For that we need sketch number three because we have this region here. We take that extrude, take that, make a new body We'll be going in that direction with a starting offset, which will be seven millimeters from that um, sketch plane here to the inside. Turn that around and just take that to that vertex here. Accept that. Call that part here bottom panel. I will apply again something else than blue. That one. And now we need to remove um, this um, overlap from those two parts. I will hide that one, that sketch, and go into Boolean, subtract. The bottom panel is our tool. Targets are that one and that one, front and side panel. We don't need that at the, at the back panel, right? Because while the way this is constructed, this is slid in, and then it is um, fixed in that position, maybe with a screw to that back panel. All right, so we got that. And we're ready to mirror our parts. Mirror? Well, when to select that, take that face, accept that, and 
right now we got to for those one two three four parts we need to apply boolean again i start in the back and now we we won't keep the tools anymore we'll just make one part of that one next one those two accept that front one more time there it is all right so that's it for for the wood parts the wooden parts and now we'll um, make that knob that hardware I'll just take the right plane for that as a basis for sketching press N again and let me show you uh, that section view command um, I take the right plane so we see right through our piece our draw and then let's start with a line command I will sketch the profile here Here, the new tangent arc command from on shape. Connect that here. Make those two coincident. Um, press H for horizontal constraints between those points here. Press, yeah, one more here. Give it an overall length of 24, height of 6, um, with 3 millimeters, and that's going to be 2 by to press E to make those equal here. Oops, one too much. All right, there. Here's three millimeters. That'll be. Three millimeters. Oh, well, that's defined already. And give that an equal relationship here, and that it will be two millimeters as well. Now we need to connect that. With some midpoint here. All right. Something's missing here. All right, give that with E. An equal relationship. Go into the revolve. Take all those faces. New body. Accept that. And now let's see. I'll get out of here. First, that is our last part here. Right? So let's call that knob. And okay, we had to find this as the side. I will rename that and call that side panel right. 
and I will name this one here side panel left. Great. So now let's supply a hole that goes through our front cover and our front panel and then we will and and that goes through our knob as well and then we will place a, a screw in there so for that i'll show you a unique way of using mates let's hide that knob for a moment go into mate connector and place that mate here on that face go to the hole command and make a clearance hole for a for m4 screw um, place that now sketch points to place holes or mate connector select mate connector I take that and front cover, front panel, all right. And let's take that through. But sure, it goes through all, and we will remove the, the back panel from that selection. Let's have a look at that. There is our hole here. It's done. Great. Let's hide the uh, front panel and front cover and show the knob. The mate connector is visible. I'll turn that around. Go back to the hole command. Now let's um, drill into our knob. I take the whole command. I'm in the ISO standard. This will be a blind drill with a M4 size drilled. Four millimeters. 12 millimeters deep and let's reuse our mate connector all right so let's um, see that together so we got that hole through going through our front panel or front cover and inside our knob and now we need we want to insert a screw for that we need to be in the assembly environment so let me go into assembly number one insert take our whole part studio place it here Accept that, turn that around, there's our hole, and go into insert, and so we get the, um, it says current document, other document, now we go into standard content, and you get the different standards, we will be picking from the DIN standard, then the different categories. I'll take, we want to have a screw, I'll take that, that one here. And so I picked this one here, the slotted hat screw. And um, the size, well, M4. You could pick other um 
dimensions. Length, 35. I picked that one because here front panel is 16. Cover was 8, right? 16, 24. And then the screw goes 11 millimeters deep into our knob. So that should fit, right? So I say insert. And I got it hanging on my mouse here. And I take that edge of that hole and place our screw. All right, maybe we want to have a look how, whether that worked out. So I take the section view, take that face here, and just pull up to where the screw is. And don't let that fool you that that is now that same color as the sides. That is the screw, all right? It's gray or what. And that is the length of our screw. And should work like that, right? All right. So all our modeling, inserting, all that is done. Let's hide our mate connector here. And finally, let's work on that exploded view. So um, there it is, exploded views. I take that and add an exploded view. Let's see how would that work. Maybe we start with a knob, pulling that out. Then our front cover, like this. Then we need to remove the sides here. Take that one. Yeah. The other one. Over here. <laughs> then that back panel over there. That front panel over here. Maybe that bottom panel somewhere here. And that screw towards there. All right, so that is our exploded view. Um, done. Okay, now, go, how do you call it, contracts everything. And whenever you want to activate it again, here it is. And that is nice to, to have that function within the assembly. But now let's see how we can insert that type of exploded view in the drawing environment. So for that, I start a drawing. I go into ISO. I, I go into custom template. I take the A3 and millimeters, first angle, projection method. I do not include any border or title block. Okay, that. There it is, oh, our drawing. And insert our assembly number one. Go right away into the isometric one to three viewing scale. Take that. And that's nice to have here contracted or assembled like that. Let's do that one more time. That same view, but now let's pick that explode one. Take that over here. 
And there it is. So um, that it, that's it for our tutorial. I will place a file, uh, a link to this file in the comment section. And well, if you like this content, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Really, it's nice for me to have some feedback from you. If you have any, any comments, any suggestions, please do so. Co comment on that on this video. And well, I see you in the next video.